The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. For real smoking enjoyment, nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. Yes, friends, for real deep-down smoking enjoyment, nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Here's why. Lucky's better taste starts with good-tasting tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Then, too, Lucky's are made better to taste better, to give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother-tasting smoke. That's the secret of real smoking enjoyment. Lucky's fine tobacco in a cigarette that's made better to taste better. So be happy. Go lucky. Next time you buy cigarettes, make it a carton of Lucky Strike. Because... Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! From the American Legion Hall in Palm Springs, California, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, our little star is completely recovered from his recent attack of influenza. But his doctors advised him to get a little sunshine and rest. So last Thursday, he got in his Maxwell and had Rochester drive him to Palm Springs. Gosh, Rochester, no matter how many times I make the trip, I still love the ride to Palm Springs. It is beautiful, boss. What town are we passing through now? Cabazon. Are you sure? Are you sure it's Cabazon? Certainly. We've been going through it for the past two hours. (laughs) I like to get to the springs before dark, although we're not making such bad time considering we had three blowouts. Five. No, no, Rochester, we only had three blowouts. Five. The tire blew out three times and your hair blew out twice. (laughs) Oh, yes, the man behind us thought we lost our foxtail. (laughs) Anyway, we've been passing through some nice scenery. I know so many wineries and miles and miles of vineyards. Yeah, this is the wine country. And you notice the cows, how sleek and fat they are? They look so contented. They're more than contented, they're drunk. (laughs) Rochester, stop making things up, drunken cows. Of all the... Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? We're almost out of gas. We better stop at a gas station. Oh, all right. Now we have to go through lifting up the seat and everything. (laughs) Oh, well. I'll drive him to the station on the corner. Yes, sir. Fill her up. Well, how far are we from Palm Springs now? 17 miles. 17 miles, huh? Let me see. The altitude here is 3,100 feet. And the altitude of Palm Springs is 270 feet, which is a drop of 2,830 feet which for 17 miles would be about three and a quarter percent grade. Now, the wind is at our back, (laughs) but at the pass, it becomes a headwind of about 19 miles an hour. Hmm. Let me see. Put in two and four-tenths gallons. (laughs) Yes, Mr. Einstein. (laughs) My name isn't Einstein. Oh, yeah. Your initials are on the side of the car, B.H. Those aren't my initials. They belong to the man I bought the car from. B.H. Bob Hope? No, Ben Hur. <laughs> Never mind, Rochester. Just stand up and drive. Now, let's get going. We want to arrive at the springs before dark. That was Thursday. Friday was a beautiful day, and Jack really enjoyed it. He visited Mary Livingston at the Park Lane Hotel, and they spent the afternoon around the swimming pool. Gee, the sun feels good, Mary. Yeah. A couple of more hours of this, and we'll both have beautiful tans. Say, uh, Mary. Uh, yes, Jack? 
Uh, Mary, I, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, what is it? Well, it's a, it's a little embarrassing. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack, what is it? Well, I don't like to mention this, but uh, your bathing suit is awfully snug and skimpy. Well, go in and take it off. I didn't want to lend it to you in the first place. <laughs> I can't help it if Rochester forgot to pack my suit. You think I like wearing yours? I'm going to have an awful time explaining my tan to the boys in the steam room. <laughs> oh, stop pouting and enjoy yourself. I am enjoying myself. It's a fine town for you to catch a cold in, too. There's one spot I love for vacation, though. It's Palm Springs. Come on, Mary, let's go in the pool. Last one in is a rotten egg. I didn't know Jack could die that well. Hmm. He hasn't come up yet. I wonder what happened. Hope there's nothing wrong. Gosh, it's been nearly a minute. How can he hold his breath that long? I better jump in and... Oh, good, he's coming up now. Phew. Mary... Why didn't you tell me those trunks had no string? <laughs> the last time I ever wear your suit. Good. And take off my cap. You look like a honeydew melon. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm getting out. Oh, it's cold when you get out. Mary, throw me a towel. Okay, here you are. You didn't have to throw it so hard. Help me out of the pool. <laughs> that was how Jack spent Friday. And on Saturday, feeling full of vim, vigor, and vitality, he tried his luck on the Tamarisk Golf Course with Bob Crosby. What'd you have on this hole, Bob? I had a par four. Four? Yes, Jack, four. Hmm. I was sure you took five strokes. Oh, no, my tee shot was right down the middle. Then I used the six iron, was right on the green. My first putt just rimmed the cup, and my second putt was in. Yeah, you're right. You did have a four. Well, I guess you win that hole. Why, what'd you have? Twelve. <laughs> well, maybe I'll beat you on this next hole. Go ahead, tee off. Okay. Nice shot, Bob. Now stand back, please. <clears throat> I want to make sure it's teed up just right. Well, here I go. Hmm, missed it. Hmm. Hmm. They're not making the balls as big this year. Oh, quiet. <laughs> Stop grinning. You make me nervous. Now, here it goes. There, I hit it. Hey, where'd the ball go, Bob? Oh, you sliced it out into the rough. Oh, well, let's go look for it. Da dee dee dee, bon bo bee bee. Da dee dee dee, da dee dee. Yeah, it's a pretty song, Bob. Yeah, I was going to do it on the show. Oh, good, good. Let me hear it now. If I don't find my ball, sing an encore or something, will you? <laughs> Pretend you're happy when you're blue. It isn't very hard to do. You'll find happiness without an end Whenever you pretend Remember anyone can dream And nothing's bad as it may seem The little things you haven't got Could be a lot if you'd pretend You'll find a love you can share 
one you can call all your own. Just close your eyes, she'll be there. You'll never be alone. And if you sing this melody, you'll be pretending just like me. The world is mine, it can be yours, my friends. So why don't you Nice song, Bob. I like the way you... Hold it, Jack. Uh, we're walking past your bow. Oh, where is it? Well, it's right behind that tree. Say, you got a real bad lie there. Oh, yes. It's about 200 yards to the green. Got to keep it low so I don't hit the branches of the tree there. Then I got to get it up high to go over those other trees. Right in front of the green, there's that big sand trap. Bob, what do you think I ought to use? Ben Hogan. <laughs> too light a club for me. <laughs> I'm an ad-libbing fool. Eh? Let me see. Gee, I was in the same spot yesterday when I played with Stanley Curtis and George Howard. They're both watching the game. I thought I'd mention them. If this tree wasn't directly in the way. I could... Hey, where'd that ball go? You know where it went. You kicked it right out into the fairway. Well, it was an accident. Some accident. The first kick, you missed it. <laughs> Well, it was an accident. I'm going to shoot it from there. Oh, no, you're not. The rules say that if you move a ball, it costs you a stroke, and you can't argue with me because I know the rules of golf. You know, Bob, this is an amazing coincidence. What's a coincidence? It was exactly this time last year, right here on this course, that my ex-orchestra leader <laughs> became my ex-orchestra leader because he, too, knew the rules of golf. <laughs> Caddy, hand me my three wood. Thank you. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Well, I don't know, but when we get to the green, just drop a ball in the hole. I've got a wife and five kids to support. <laughs> oh, star, there it is. It's just on the green. There. Say, that was a swell shot, Jack. Now let's walk over to where I am. See, these few days in Palm Springs are doing me a lot of good, Bob. You know, I'll feel great when we do our television show next Sunday. Yeah, and with this tan I've got, I won't need a lot of makeup. Yeah. Well, here's your ball, Bob. Your shot. Well, all I need is just a little chip. Mm, nice shot, Bob. Right on the green. Come on. Well, we're both on the green in two. Yeah. You putt first, Jack. You're away. Putt? Aren't you going to concede that? <laughs> Jack, you got an eight-foot putt there. Give me one good reason why I should concede it. I'll give you a six. Your wife and five children. <laughs> yes, folks, that's what Jack did Saturday. But now, this is Sunday, the day he does his radio broadcast. And in honor of our locale, today we're going to do a dramatic play based on the historical discovery of Palm Springs. Curtain. Music. Ladies and gentlemen, although for centuries without number, the area around Palm Springs was known and loved by the Indians. It was not discovered by the white man till 1774. It was in this year that the Spaniards pushed through to the desert in California. But the Spaniards, hungry for gold, saw no value in this area and pushed on toward the coast. For nearly another century, Palm Springs remained sleeping in the sun, a veritable paradise for the Indians of the Awa Caliente tribe. This isn't funny, folks, but up till now, Don has had nothing. 
Continue, Donzie. Then in the year 1853, two intrepid explorers headed west from Texas into the blistering, burning desert. The sun is sure hot today, Tex. Yep. This sand is burning my feet, Tex. I think it's even hotter than it was yesterday, Tex. I reckon you're right, Tex. Well, let's push on, Tex. Right behind you, Tex. One of us should have come from Colorado. <laughs> Tell you what, Tex, you can call me Slim. Okay, Slim. And I think we're lost in this desert because... Hey, wait a minute. Look, there's a man coming towards us. Oh, yes. Hello there. Buenos dias, mister. <laughs> now, look, amigo, we're lost. We've been wandering through this desert heat for days without water or food. Our skins are burned to a crisp and our feet worn raw. Maybe you can help us. Se hable templo no dies cajuire por tener tacos. What does that mean? Next time, take the train and relax. <laughs> Don't be stupid. There's not a train within a thousand miles of here. Yeah, do you live around here? Oh, no, mister. Then what are you doing out here in the desert anyway? I'm looking for my sister, mister. <laughs> Your sister's lost, eh? When'd she disappear? Last night was when I first missed her. Your sister? Yes, mister. <laughs> You've been walking through the desert all day? Yes, and on my foot I have a blister. <laughs> well, that's too... Mister. <laughs> hmm. Hey, that sis of yours, is she beautiful? Yes, you couldn't resist her. <laughs> well, maybe you can... Mister. <laughs> I've had enough of this silly talk. Come on, Tex, let's go. Hey, wait a minute, Slim. Here comes somebody else. What are you hombres doing around my neck of the woods? Out of my way, mister. We're trekking onward. Oh, no, you ain't. Oh, yes, we are. Be careful, Slim. Be careful. That's Windy Wilson, the toughest man in these here parts. Windy Wilson, eh? Well, I'll take care of that. <laughs> Shot him right in the stomach. Yes, sir. Oh, you got me. You got me. And now I'm a-dying. I'm a-heading for the big corral up yonder where the deer and the antelope play on fleecy clouds, where there ain't no lost little doggies, and the chuck wagon is always filled. Yeah, I'm a-heading for that big heavenly roundup in the sky. Yes, I'm a- Oh, to... shut up. You had enough to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on, Tex. Wait a minute. Here come three guys on horseback. Where? Where? Oh, they will not hurt you, mister. They are my brothers, the Guadalajara Trio. They are singers. The Guadalajara Trio. <laughs> Who was that applauding? I don't know. Dig this crazy desert. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sing something, boys. Una poca de luz en 
nuestra aurora Lucky strike, mean fight, tobacco Piedra, piedra para el que llora Un poco de calor is better tasting El SMP Very good, senor. Now, come on, Tex. We got to go and discover Palm Springs. So long, amigo. Adios, and if I do not see you till then, happy Easter. Thanks. Easter. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Tex. Oh, one moment, senor. Now what? I bet you are surprised to meet a Mexican who does not do that silly talk about Psy. Psy? Si. Now, cut that <laughs> Come on, Tex, time to discover <laughs> Palm Springs. <laughs> There's no doubt about it, Tex. We're lost. Yeah, Slim. And you better go on without me. I can't make it. I'm too tired. I'm too thirsty. My throat is parched and 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 Tex, what are you staring at? I look up ahead. There's a pool of clear, cold water and a beautiful gal standing beside it. Let's go. You can have the water. Tex! Tex, come back. It's only a mirage. Hello, beautiful. Hi, handsome. Tex, come back. It's a mirage. How about a kiss, sweetie? Okay, cutie, come here. Tex, stop kissing that mirage. <laughs> Tex, we acting crazy. I tell you, it's a mirage. Tex, stop! Oh, oh. What? You were making a fool out of yourself. You were standing there, kissing a mirage. Are you sure? Certainly. <laughs> you had your arms around a cactus plant. Cactus plant? What a fool I've been. Yeah. For the past two weeks, I've been walking right by them. <laughs> Now, look, Tex, get a grip on yourself. Here, take these last few drops of water out of my canteen. I don't think we have too far to go. We must be getting near Palm Springs now. We've been going through these vineyards for days. Yeah, look, here comes a cow. <laughs> Rochester was right. <laughs> Tex, look. Look, here, we made it. This is Palm Springs. Read the sign on that building. Welcome to Palm Springs. Try your luck at Cactus Pete's gambling joint and date shop. <laughs> Come on. Let's go in. Hiya, fellas. Come on right in. Who are you? I'm Tumbleweed Tess, the owner. Oh, hello, Tess. Wait a minute. Hey, Tess, didn't I see you in a mirage before? No, that was my sister, Babe. She's a cactus plant. <laughs> see, Tex, I told you. Would you boys like to try your luck gambling? Well, sure. What do you got here? Blackjack, poker, dice, and roulette. I like to play a little roulette. Is it on the level? Are you kidding that wheel is so crooked, we have to have the brakes reliant twice a week. <laughs> well, I'm going to play some roulette. Come on, let's go in. All right, gentlemen, how about a little action around here? Pick your number and watch a wheel go round. I'll put $5 on 28. That's always been my lucky number. Okay, $5 on 28. <laughs> Thirteen 
13, you lose. <laughs> but 28's my lucky number. Another $5 on 28. <laughs> 13, you lose. <laughs> I'll try it once more. $5 on 28. There it is, 28. <laughs> 13, you lose. <laughs> now, wait a minute. This game is crooked. And another thing, your face is familiar to me. Haven't I seen you before? Could be. In the last half hour, I was a gas station attendant, a Mexican, and a drunken cow. I thought so. Come on, Tex, let's get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, the very best Easter gift of all is the support you give through Easter seals to children who need your help. These seals provide medical care, nursery centers, and many other things that are needed. So give and give generously to the Easter seal agency in your community, or send your contributions to Crippled Children, care of your local post office. Thank you. That will be back in just a moment. But first, the word to cigarette smokers. Nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. Friends, it stands to reason. The cigarette for you to smoke is the one that tastes better. Because when all is said and done, nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. You'll agree once you try them, and here's why. Lucky's better taste really begins with fine tobacco. Most anyone can tell you, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco with a wonderful aroma and even better taste. And Lucky's also taste better because they're made better. They're made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly, to give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother smoke. So get the better taste that fine tobacco in a better made cigarette can give. When you buy cigarettes, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes another show from Palm Springs. And, Bob, I want to tell you that it was a lot of fun playing golf with you while we were down here. Well, thanks, Jack. But there's something that I wanted to ask you. You know, all the time we were playing, you carried a golf ball in your hand, and yet you never used it. Well, Bob, I never used that ball. Oh? You see, it's a memento of my happiest memory in all the years that I've been playing golf. Oh, you made a hole-in-one with it? No, no. But two years ago at Hillcrest, someone drove that ball off the tee, hit me on the head... I sued and collected $2,000. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned for The Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>